Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome uh, back to a special recording um, that I'm doing. Um, this is like an additional um, segment uh, to what mine and Ms. my uh, co-host, Dwayne uh, Stinson, uh, had just done uh, for you guys just to, just on the last show. Um, guys, I am truly um, vexed uh, with this particular mass shooting. And it's so many um, things that are running through my mind. So please forgive me for the long, extra long pauses and um, me kind of like fumbling th through my thoughts because there's a lot that I want to say. And at the same time, at times I'm at a loss for words as well. So if you've ever been in the position of, you know, I've always not been the type of person just to sit down and be quiet. But at the same time, you, you just feel like you just, you need to say something. And um, so what I did, um, I put together uh, a little visual for you, um, but it was um, after I was sitting down at, at my, at my uh, laptop here and I was just uh, going through the news and hearing different angles. And one particular uh, angle that I heard specifically from um, MSNBC, it was the first time I have ever uh, seen someone actually mention a particular, like by name, um, a particular big gun and mostly and, and honestly I, I can only imagine why um big names are not ever really mentioned like directly but you can only imagine that the reason being is because of the power and the position that they do have in this world um, and I must commend Mr. Uh, Lawrence O'Donnell on MSNBC for exposing a very big elephant. And the elephant that he exposed was the multi-billionaire and owner of Fox News. Um, they entitled their show that Fox News has blood on his hands. And I'm like, wow, okay, that's kind of bold and broad. And, but he, of course, in the reporting of it, he focused it down further. And I respect the way that he did it. Instead of blaming the panel, the anchors, uh, like he say, like he called it <laughs> the men in makeup, he put the onus where I think it truly should belong to. And that is the owner, the multi billion uh, billionaire. Mr. Rupert Murdoch. He is the one that says show, no show. He's the one. Of course, you have editors, directors, different things like that. But the base, the bottom line, the big daddy, the father, the one that signs everybody's checks. He is the one that says go, no go, 
show, no show. So I'm not, I'm just going to surmise what uh, Lawrence said, uh, but it's still pretty much the gist of what he said. So uh, I'm referring back to my notes because I want to try to stay as focused as I can. So Lawrence uh, said that uh, Rupert Murdoch uh, helps make sure that America's mass murderers are still what they have always been. And that is to be the best equipped mass murderers in the world. That particular statement stood out for me and no, it's not quoted, uh, but it's the gist of what he was saying. Um, because that's that says it all. They have one of the, Fox News has one of the largest if not, it's probably the largest um, news media platform there is. You know, MSNBC, they have 95 million, if I make no mistake, household viewers and everything. And of course, covering news, political opinions and different things like that. And I just got my little group with me but for the people that do follow me, um, I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate not only your viewership, your comments, your suggestions, your opinions, but I try to be factual with mine. I try to be factual. And the fact of the matter is um, even watching um, I cannot think of his name right now. Please forgive me. But um, he was being interviewed uh, by a, a British network, news network. And so the opinion was asked of him. And honestly, I don't think that they were ready for uh, the way that he reacted because um it's just like how Lawrence said, Martin, um, Martin, because, you know, he has his own show. He has his, his man, he is like, I call him the male Oprah of, of uh, news and reporting and podcast, because um, if not, he is well on his way. But here's the thing. Uh, Within three minutes, he had already made his point. And um, one of his main points was this. This is not going to end. This is not going to end because of the individuals and the ideology and the undertone of racism is based within that particular man. And because of the very foundation of what Fox News is really about. And as long as they are feeding this stupidity, this ideology, we will forever be covering news like this. We will forever be fighting. We will forever be surviving. But we will survive. So um, right now I want to pay homage. If you guys just bear with me. I want to take this time out to share 
um, what I have for you guys. And um, I want to recognize the fallen of Buffalo's uh, mass shootings. I want for everybody to take a really good look at these victims of an 18 year old racist neo-Nazi self-proclaimed neo-Nazi supremacist. These are the lives that he took without any remorse. He live streamed himself driving up to the Tops supermarket. I'm not allowed to show the video. But you would think that he was just doing a live stream of him, of just him just pulling up and about to go shopping or something. There was no sense of nervousness, not even, no sense of, man, I, I don't know if I wanna do this. It was no second guessing. He went to this particular store on purpose as, Lawrence said he actually bypassed Syracuse, which actually has 20 plus percent black population. But no, he chose this particular supermarket specifically to kill these 10 victims right here. So at this time, I'm, I would like to put names to these faces. You have Roberta Drury, age 32. You have Margus Morrison, age 52. Andre McNeil, age 53. Aaron Salter, age 55. Geraldine Talley, age 62. Celestine Chaney, 65. Hayward Patterson, age 67. Catherine Massey, age 72. Pearl Young, 77. Ruth Whitfield, 86 years young. Six female, four male are no longer with us because of stupidity, ignorance, and right wing rhetoric. Three are injured. That gives us a total of 13 victims, but 10 of them are no longer with us. One alive and well, 18-year-old 
mass murder. Now, I have not verified this particular information even from the last show. And I don't want to incite any uh, misinformation out there. But if this young man Uh, is pleading innocent. Um, in which he has the right to, I mean, I hate to say that, but as a society, I'm just begging my community, please y'all, Let's just try to keep it together. We already know. We already know how nutballs like this are very much protected by Trumpites, Fox, uh, extreme right, Fox News uh, followers and everything. He's another Kyle Rittenhouse multiplied many times over. My question is, actually, I, I, I don't have a question because I already know the answer. And it's been said many times over. When is this going to stop? is going to stop when these multi-million dollar low-key races says, okay, stop. That's when it's going to stop. And right now, somewhere in this United States of America, the country that I gave 13 years, 11 months, and two weeks, of my naval service as being a military police officer, I actually fought for idiots like this to have freedoms to perpetuate stereotypes and promote their ideology and fear among, among themselves so we end up with this type of result. But I didn't really fight for that. I fought for the freedom of all. I stood the watch for freedom and liberty and justice for all. By every right, that young man should not be standing right now. He should have never seen cuffs by every right shoot no shoot situations police training as soon as the first iron sight or scope uh lined up on that young man it should have been over But it didn't happen. It didn't happen. And we all know why. It's because he's white. And that's just the truth of the matter.
because had he been black, well, first, well, the likelihood of anybody black going on a mass killing spree, um, I haven't heard of it in, in my lifetime. And even for the guy that was shooting out of his trunk, he wasn't uh, an African-American. Um, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't be alive. I get nervous every time I'm just driving down the road. And I know how to conduct myself. I know to make sure that my license plate and my insurance and everything is up to date. And if I ever get pulled over, I know to stay calm and be just ready. I know how to uh, conduct myself and not try to draw attention uh, to myself when I'm out in public and things like that. And people like me still die at the hands of heavy badge trigger finger, uh, itchy trigger finger police officers. The youngest one on this panel is 32 years of age. And the eldest is 86. This man did not care and would have had three more victims. And I think if the reporting is correct, two of those victims were white. But if you had seen his uh, live stream, he actually came up on a white man, you know, screaming and curled up like anybody else would be. And he actually apologized to that white man and continued on with his shooting spree. But I just want to take the time out and just put names to faces and age because they deserve to be honored and recognized. And they did not deserve this. And so with that being said, I'm gonna let you go. I thank you guys again, as always, for supporting me and what I do and what I will continue to do. And that's continually to ex expose these elephants. Thank y'all so much. Until next time.